I was so busy in those days. I mean, I really was running up and down all over the country. And we got this phone call and it said, would you come and participate in a documentary that we're doing? Uh, people who support old people, we want you to go along to the Daffodil Club in the East End and just sing a couple of songs and the cameras will be there, etc., etc." Because Anne told me it was London weekend. I said, well, OK, right. So on the day that the car arrived to pick me up, I was digging away and doing things in the garden and then kept coming over and saying, are you going to get changed? Are you going to get changed? I said, well, there's, there's no need to bother. I'm not, you're not in that much of a hurry, are you? Just let me finish what I'm doing here. She said, if you don't hurry up, she said, the car will be here in a minute. I'll, I'll hit you over the head with a shovel, she said. <laughs> So eventually I went and got changed and sort of looked... She said, put a decent shirt on and look respectable, you know, for when you get there, because there's going to be cameras there. So I did, and I got changed. The car came, and I went... And as soon as I got there, there was just a little bell ringing in the back of my head. I said, I thought you said this was London weekend, and I saw the vans. I said, the vans have got Thames on them. She said, well, it doesn't matter. All right, Thames, London weekend. She said, it doesn't matter. And when I got there, I was being hurried right away. Come on, Vince, nice to see you. Get in there. It, it, it's in there, it's in there. That's where you want it. Do you want a cup of tea? And I'm standing there with a cup of tea. Just start, just start singing. And my, my, my piano player was there, Ernie, Ernie Dunstall, bless him. We were together for 22 years. And he started to play Rose of the Picardy. And I start to sing with a, with a cup of tea in my hand at first. All right, loves, how are you? And all that. Oh, yes, we all love you, Vince. So I sing, roses are shining in Picardy. I'm doing all... Sorry, sorry, stop, stop. But the gremlins are in. I said, right, ready, right, start again, and I'll go again. And this happened, it happened about at least half a dozen times, I think, you know. And I thought, oh, this is ridiculous. No, sorry, Vince, just just one more time, one more time. And it finally comes again, and I'm now well into the song. Roses are shining in Picardy. And I felt this pat on the back of my shoulder. And it, you you can actually see it on the, you, if you look closely <laughs> on the tape that I saw afterwards, you can actually see I just go... Oh no! And I turn around and go, oh, oh, it's same. And you can see me actually word mouth of words, you know. And then they said, uh, Vince Hill, this is your life. Well, it was such a, a shock, I'll tell you. And and that was the pickup. And of course, then after that, I was um, taken. I think it was a place called the White House. They used to take everybody to, and uh, plenty of champagne and sandwiches and all that but don't get drunk before we do the show. <laughs> yeah, those are the days. It was, it was fun. The, the guests that, that that they dug up, you know, they came on, I mean, from all over. My best friend from the Army, Brian Mather from the Army Band, we were with the Royal Corps of Signals. Two people came from um, Canada. Dennis Holroyd, who was literally my neighbour across the street where I used to live. Jackie Lee, who was with me in, in that later life when I, when I formed the helped to form the raindrops and she was the lead singer in the raindrops and eventually she went to to canada to live so she came from there too but mostly it was a laugh i just i mean all the people that i knew then in the band and some of them were still in but even the old band sergeant major they brought on the singer that i took over from was a lovely man called mick birchall with a lovely voice I, I mean i've seen a few this is your lives and they people do get very emotional but I was determined to just enjoy it. I just lay back, as they say, and I just enjoyed it. It was a laugh all the way through. Funnily enough, I think maybe the idea probably came because they did Lionel Blair, and Lionel lived near us, and they wanted a, a safe house to be near to him and chat to other people sort of that knew him. And they used us. They used our house. And I think it was there that um, they got the idea to, to, um, to do me. It was a guy called Morris, Morris Leonard, who we all know, you know, has been very successful since then, but he was researching on the show. And I think it was suggested then to Anne that it might be a good idea, they might sort of do me. And, of course, eventually, you know, they did. But I think it was doing Lionel, Lionel, that sort of put the set the idea in motion. And I was doing a show with uh, Jack Parnell in the orchestra, and I went off in the afternoon and uh, came back. And it was absolute panic. I only found this out afterwards because I came back and Anne's mother, who used to live with us in a, in a cottage just across from us, but she was in the house at that time, and she let me in. And she said, oh, Vince is coming, Vince is coming. <laughs> so I, I walked in and they couldn't... Uh, they were both on the floor and everything was all sort of, you know, all my photographs and everything like that, and they were trying to shuffle them away. But uh, they covered very well and said, oh, no, it's just Morris is here. We're, we're talking about you because he's doing another piece for you in this magazine, this horoscope magazine, whatever, you know. I said, oh, hello, Morris, how are you, you know. And uh, it was only, I mean, it looked even worse because it, 
a zipper had split. <laughs> and uh, they covered very well, actually, I must admit. And I didn't, I didn't actually fall into anything. I had no idea. And uh, it, was, it was such a, such a shock when, they, when uh, it happened, you know. Well, it was at a very good time. Of course, I'd, I'd had the, the, my biggest hit, Edelweiss, which, would you believe, was 1967. And I was really, really busy. And This Is Your Life, I, I would, I'd, I'd done a lot of television by then. I think, I think we'd done probably the first series of They Sold a Million. Well, it just made everybody really rethink about me, you know, as well. I mean, I, I, I was, you, you, you get to a stage in your career where, you know, I'd had hit records and by that time I was doing television and I was travelling around. I was beginning to get a pretty fair reputation for not being trouble. Get in, get on and get out was always my attitude. But um, sometimes I felt, you know, I suppose it was sort of good old Vince, take it for granted. Yeah, get him, get him, he'll come on and he'll go in and he'll do a job and he'll, he'll go home. And... I think this is your life. Suddenly put me up there, and it suddenly made people go, "Wow, old Vince, yeah, look at that." You know, and it was number one in the ratings. And believe me, that was very gratifying for that. And uh, yeah, it, it did it did make a lot of people think about me at the time. I think it was it was quite a surprise, probably more of a surprise to some people than it than it was to myself. Although I, I was sort of astounded when it happened. I mean, I really was. Yeah, yeah it did did. Uh, make people uh, think again about me, I think.